day three of the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games and at the Yansing National Alpine Skiing Centre. Super combined day and the second part of the super combined, the slalom run has been delayed by half an hour. Now the first run this morning was a super G run and that was held on the speed course and the second part of the super combined the slalom leg being held on a separate course so logistically getting cameramen and officials from the speed course across to the technical course has led to a half hour delay uh, and the competition will not start before 2.15 in the afternoon local time, as you can see by the caption on your screen. Uh, an unfortunate delay, but uh, not unexpected, and one that the athletes will just take in their stride. Yes, and another positive to take from this short delay is our race organisers will be able to treat the slope with some extra chemicals, do some a little bit more coarse slipping work, because as we've seen throughout the day, the conditions here are very, very warm. So... Um, it gives us a chance to improve the course conditions and uh, make for fairer racing all the way through this slightly delayed competition later this afternoon. Originally scheduled for day four of these Paralympic Winter Games, the race jury, the race committee, decided to bring it forward 24 hours because of the increase in temperature and the temperature up at the Yansing National Alpine Skiing Centre getting uh, above five degrees, plus five degrees, which is why they brought it forward because it's supposed to be even warmer tomorrow. And as you can see at the moment, the uh, track looks in really good nick, but we've got a, a lot of skiers to ski it. But we'll have to wait and see. The excitement won't unfold as we'd hoped at quarter to two, but it will unfold at quarter past two. And as you can see, the uh, slippers going down, but also chemicals being put onto the snow to hold it and make it more durable as the races uh, go through. So as I say, start of the competition delayed by at least half an hour and the slalom part of the super combined will not get underway until 2.15 local time and of course if that changes we'll bring you any news just as soon as we get it.
这里的空间。包括最大的影响就是把这些好的东西，包括孩子的一代一代孩子的这参与，他们体验，把这融入到生活里面是最重要的
Ladies and gentlemen, please help us keep the venue clean by filling your appropriate to the wick piece provided. Thank you for your support. As usual, ladies and gentlemen, the Young King National Alpine Skiing Center is a non-smoking venue. So please do not smoke inside the venue. Thank you for your cooperation. And last info, please wear a mask at all time while entering the venue to watch the competition.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much to be with us today for the second round men and women super combined on our beautiful and favorite ice river. I'm with Sai and I'm so much. How are you doing, Sai?
wonderful video in the house. You yeah. see a project. You have a touch in it, you know? Yeah, I'm very, very cute. Okay, so let's talk about the, the schedule of this afternoon. This afternoon, we're about to watch the slalom second rounds for men and women super combined in three different categories. We will have the vision and care, standing, and sitting skip here. So this afternoon we have several athletes to watch, so be careful, open your eyes. We have Yasin Dilfrat and this guy, Valentine Hibbles 1, representing bronze, winners of the first bronze Super G season in Paris this morning.
Day three of the Paralympic Winter Games and the second part of the, uh, the Super Combined is the slalom run. The Super G run run earlier on day three and now the slalom run and it is the combined times from the Super G leg and the slalom run that will go towards the podium at the end of day three and the weather well it's uh, really warm lovely if you're on the side watching the races but for the races itself it's meaning the snow is starting to soften and break up and it's going to be interesting to see how it goes as we work our way through the 80 races at the top of the hill the three classes vision impaired standing and sitting women will go first and then the men confirmation of the weather conditions at the finish area just under four degrees centigrade the snow well below freezing but it's uh, taking that sun all the while and uh, it is set up for a fascinating leg of the super combined the women's super combined, vision impaired, the slalom run, the second of the two runs to decide who the medal winners are at Beijing 2022. Last minute preparations at the top of the piece. All the accreditations are gathered and will be taken to the bottom. Let's have a look at the start list. And there are seven competitors from five National Paralympic Committees in this slalom run. The defending Paralympic champion is Henrietta Farsakova. She goes at bib number six. She was the second quickest after the first run. The reigning world champion is Millie Knight with bib number three. She was fourth quickest. But the quickest of all is Judah King. And the, the start order is flipped and the slowest from the first run goes first and the fastest goes last and that happens in all the classes yeah it's going to be a real nail biter till the end of each category and uh, as you say with the reverse start or order from the results from the super g leg everybody watching and waiting patiently we've had a 15 minute delay the good thing about that is that course workers have been able to do some extra work in preparing the snow they put chemicals on that causes a reaction which drops the temp an endothermic reaction it drops the snowpack temperature and uh, that allows any free water that's coming present in the snow to bind together to basically freeze the snowpack back together and hopefully that uh, that that reaction will continue for the duration of the afternoon to give firm and fair racing conditions for everybody all the way through the field. Well, this is Ava Niku from Greece. He will get us underway. And this is the first time that all these athletes have had a go on the Ice River, which is the technical track, a, a different piece to the speed track. And none of them would have skied on this before. The training hill is just to the skiers left. But this is the race piece. Ivaniku of Greece gets the women's super combined vision impaired slalom run underway in this the super combined the two times are added together from the super G run this morning and the slalom run this afternoon and Niku sets a first split of 126.46 141.26 sorry Oh, and then oh, just gets the straddle. That's unfortunate. I was going to say she's a B3 skier, so she has a, a degree of, of visual acuity, and that allows her to take a very risky line, go very close to the gate. But in that case, on the entry to that flush, that vertical combination, she just ran a little straight, and the right ski, I think it was, just flipped the wrong side of the pole. Watch the tips very closely here of the following skier. Oh, there it goes. Sorry, excuse me, left ski. It's not the first time today.
there and my left and right mixed up. But it, ultimately, it's a disqualification, and the Greek pair, Greek pair rather, are out of this competition. Bib number one, Linda Le Bon from Belgium, 57 years of age. Linda Le Bon and her guide, Ulla Gilot, are on track. The sixth fastest after the Super G run. Good chance for us to have a look at the top section of the course here. There's the pattern of gates set by Falko Tetsma, the head coach of the Netherlands Paralympic Committee team here. And the piste itself is not so steep, but the key characteristic of this part of the mountain, it gradually steepens and steepens. And we can see now the pitch is up to some 20 odd degrees. So the athletes have to guide and athlete, they really have to be certain of the timing of the edge set and the exact direction they point the skis. Now this is the really steep section of the track, the finishing pitch. It doesn't look it on this camera angle, but it is really steep and uh, really quick. And this is good work from Le Bon and really good work from her guide as well, making sure that her athlete gets down. And we have a time of 218.2. Two small errors again. So important that the athlete keeps reaching forward. That pole plant critically important in in slalom skiing. Mena Fitzpatrick and Gary Smith from Great Britain and Fitzpatrick's advantage over our leader Le Bon 4.11 seconds and Fitzpatrick was the slalom Paralympic champion in 2018 so this is a discipline she likes and she sets about this pattern of gates really well with Gary Smith in front of her great great pace from the British skiers I mean, just a little one-sided, needs to try to balance things up left and right. Pole plants are a little bit times uh, un unsynchronized or unbalanced, if you like. But again, we want to see Gary Smith doing a great job. We could do the game just a tiny bit closer together, perhaps, especially where the rhythm changes are. Here's another one into the vertical combination. Mena runs it nice and straight, gets good strong pole plants coming out, moving quickly from foot to foot. A solid section down this final pitch. 218.2, and Fitzpatrick comfortably inside. 12.22 seconds. And the British team enjoyed that run from Mena Fitzpatrick. She did well. Can look at the slow mo there. Fitzpatrick getting the hand up to brush that pole out of her way to allow her to ski a direct line as she exits the verticale section. Millie Knight of Great Britain and her guide Brett Wilde and Knight, big number three, the reigning world champion from Lillehammer in January of 2022 and her advantage really very slight over her compatriot and leader Fitzpatrick. First time split, that advantage is gone. Six hundredths the wrong side of the clock now for Knight. Looks a little bit more focused, a bit more determined. A stronger edge set as the pitch gets steeper. Millie Knight digging deep here. It's a solid performance from the pair of them. Brett Wilde doing a good job again. And quick check over his right shoulder as she come towards the next split. The six hundred though, is now grown to over a second. And the world champion has a lot to do. Got to keep it solid. It's challenging to let the skis run as fast as she dare down this final pitch. It really is so steep. 205.98. She goes second. 1.91 off the pace. And Fitzpatrick sees off one of the athletes quicker than her for the first run.
good quick switch from foot to foot by Millie Knight. Just doesn't quite get the edge biting early enough to allow her a faster, more direct line that she would really prefer, that she would really prefer rather on those tourney gates. Alexandra Reksova of Slovakia and her guide Eva Trochikova. And a good advantage over Mena Fitzpatrick, our current leader. Over two seconds. And what can the Slovakian pair do in these opening turns? Well, it's 1.76 now. Very strong team, the Slovakian skiers, both male and female programs with uh, skiers and with the standing categories, at least VI and men's and women's stand up. And it's oh, over the young out. talent. Oh, that's unfortunate. She's missed that last red gate in the vertical combination. By vertical, I mean the gates are set in a straight line down the hill, and the pair of red gates just disappearing off her screen she goes outside this last red pair there she goes just gets caught on the inside ski in the previous turn and the gates are so close together she doesn't have time to get her weight out over the left foot to bring her back under control and through the gate by a correct passage real disappointment for the youngster Rexova. and the 16 year old is out of the super combined it's really difficult, though, that vertical. You can just see that good angle of how straight those gates are set. Henrietta Farkasova of Slovakia. Her advantage over Fitzpatrick, our current leader, 3.68 and Varkasova is the reigning Paralympic champion. Now 3.68, what is it at the first split? And the answer is 3.18, so she loses half a second. Henrietta Farkasova proving very quick turns here. She's light on her feet, quickly on, quickly off, and she's got her feet close to the gates. This will be a very close run thing. The guide bring her right to the limits. I don't think they can go much quicker here. And the advantage... Yeah, it's dropped to just under three seconds. Still quite a lot going in the bank, but some big turns might just slow her down. This is going to be close. 2.05.98, the time of uh, Fitzpatrick. And Farkasova is inside, 2.59. Good skiing from Farkasova. You can see right from the get-go, she was determined to hang on to her lead. And right here, just on the limit, Henrietta almost dropped too deeply into the back seat, but made it safely to the line, leads the way. Zhu Da Keng from the People's Republic of China and her guide Yan Han Han have an advantage over Farka Sova of Slovakia of 1.92. Zhu, the quickest of the vision impaired athletes in the super, well, super G part of this super combined. And the advantage drops marginally to 1.8. We'll have to watch this very closely. Zhu in a very risky position over the skis. A lot of weight on her heels. And as the terrain drops away, she has to be careful. The skis don't run away from her. Oh, huge recovery. That's going to have cost her. She did well to stay on her feet and stay in the course, more to the point. Yeah, half a second now, the advantage. And that error might cost her down here, but she's got to let them run if she can. 203.39 is Farkasova's time. Here comes Zhu, and she's outside, but she's second. Zhu Da King for the People's Republic of China doesn't maintain her lead and goes into second. That's just the, that's the beauty of super combined competition. Despite the mistake, she had enough in the bank from the Super G leg this morning. Look, she almost comes to a complete standstill. Does a great recovery to stay on her feet and get herself back in the course. And well, 
That's uh, that's a typical story of super super combined competition. You never know until the last competitor is down the hill how the results will pan out. So the results of the women's super combined vision impaired and Henrietta Farkas over in Slovakia defends her title from 2018. Zhu Da King from the People's Republic of China, silver. And Mena Fitzpatrick of Great Britain is the bronze medalist. So the first of our six gold medals has been decided. And it is Farkasova of Slovakia, who now becomes an 11-time Paralympic champion with her second gold of these Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games. Now we wait the start of the women's super combined in the standing category. Before that, we'll have the recognition ceremony for the women's super combined visually impaired. Exactly, perfect. That's right. Come here. I am free. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to Beijing 2022. So here come. The athletes and their guides for the recognition ceremony in the women's super combined visually impaired race. And led out by Gary Smith and Mena Fitzpatrick and Henrietta Farkasova and her guide and Zhuta King from the People's Republic of China at the back. And the bronze medalists for the women's super combined vision impaired is Mena Fitzpatrick of Great Britain. Silver medalists representing the People's Republic of China is Zhu Da King. Paralympic champion as she was in 2018 and for the 11th time in her career it's Henrietta Farkasova who successfully defends her super combined title. So the women's super combined standing race and the second part, the slalom after the super G race in the morning of day three. The combined times will determine our medalists and there are 10 athletes at the top of the track from eight National Paralympic 
committees and Molly Jepson, the defending Paralympic champion, bib number 22, fifth quickest after the first run. Marie Boucher, the reigning world champion, bib number 10, third quickest after the first run. And the start order is the reverse of their finishing order in the Super G. So Ali Johnson of the USA was 10th quickest in the Super G. She'll be first out the gate in this slalom run. Here we go, Ali. Nice and fast now. Left her own devices looking down this track. And now the one comes across the gate and she'll dial in. But the course workers working really hard to keep the ruts away. Ali Johnson of the United States of America gets the women's super combined standing underway. The slalom leg, the second of the two races that go towards the super combined. And Johnson will try and put down a time that the others will try and match. Johnson, solid top section. Just, or just as I say that, she starts to run a little late as the pitch increases. We've said already, this is the most difficult section of the slalom hill. It gets very steep indeed. And already it's starting to get a little bit rough because of these changing snow conditions. This is the steepest section of all, oh. and then she catches a right ski on the blue gate, and she is down. And Johnson is out of the super combined. Real disappointment for her. Uh, that was a shame. She was looking a little bit, a little bit ragged, but she was trying to keep the pace up, trying to keep the rhythm of the course. But uh, the snow underneath the very top surface is not quite as grippy and. Difficult then for the skiers to go from the slightly softer stuff onto the hard stuff where they're trying to edge. It's difficult to predict just exactly where the skis are going to run onto the gate. And that was, uh, well, a, nearly a straddle, but in the end, the ski came off. So ultimately, same result. Johnson is out of the competition. Bib number 17 is Petra Smazova of Slovakia. And Smazova, her fifth Paralympic Winter Games. And uh, she was third in the slalom in 2014, and you can see why. She's uh, very much at home on the short skis. Yeah, very clean set of edges coming down this top flatter section. It's a very inviting top section, so she's taken full advantage of that. She knows she's got a lot of girls ahead of her. Oh, letting it try and steal too much of an advantage, going just a little too straight in that verticale. Four gates in the verticale, so you have to be a little bit cautious about how much pace you take before the swing or the or big offset turn at the end of the combination. Here comes Mazova, and she'll set a tie at 216.6, but that was a good recovery, and she almost mm -hmm. got flung out of the course. Mazova is down. It's all about uh, quick reflexes and, as you say, a, a good skill, recovery skills. And Smarsova showing those in abundance down on the middle part of the steep section. Right here, got bounced a little wide, but quickly back onto the turning ski, recovered the line as quick as she could there. Vanessa Gaskova of Slovakia, the next to race, and her advantage just. 15 hundredths of a second. Really not much at all for the youngster. Very difficult with the, without the poles and the upper limbs to help maintain that side-to-side -side balance and the tempo from turn to turn. You know, this is it's a bit like a dance, the slalom. There is a rhythm to be found within the course and finding that rhythm if you can do that and then maintain it and pick the tempo up, that's what creates winning runs. But our young Slovakia skier going steady here. Gaskova keeping on top of things, not getting phased by the steepness of the pitch. 6.48 now. This is where the Ice River run gets really steep. That's it. Gaskova has picked her way through 
that section. And Smith's over. It's time of 216.6 has come and gone. And Gaskova is down into second place for the time being. Close-up of how the skis are working. Slightly deeper edge, steeper edge angle rather. Would help give the skis a bit more bite, but uh, a good effort nonetheless. Hondo Ami of Japan, the next to go. Her advantage, 6.15 of a second over our leader, who is Smazova of Slovakia. And Honda in her rhythm straight away and has the advantage still, but it's dropped to just under five seconds. Yeah, and Honda's a little bit in the back seat, as we say. In other words, her hips are a bit low. She's in more of a sitting position rather than a tipping, crouching forward position. You need to be able to jump from ski to ski, jump forward from ski to ski. As a consequence, she's losing a little time with each and every run, each and every turn, rather. Hondo is enough in the bank, does she? She takes the lead by 3.2 seconds, 216.6, second quickest on the slalom leg. She's into the lead. Stays well on top of the skis in these slow-mo pictures. Coming off the flat, little recovery, but yeah, she had enough in the bank from that first run this morning in the Super G. Anna Maria Reda of Austria, 0.49 of a second. Her advantage, she's a bronze medalist in this event at the World Championships in Lillehammer in 2022. What can she lay down on this slalom leg? Solid slalom technique, slightly wider stance, allows her to get that edge angle developed early. Well, she's found nearly two seconds on those opening turns that the upper body gets a little twisted. Back on top of things, though, a slightly rounder line that she would like. She's a little bit late in the line here. Here comes the next split, though, after this combination. See how much damage has been done, if any. Well, no, she's increased it now to 3.91, so she finds over one and a half seconds. Into the final vertical combination, a double hairpin to come here, then four open gates to the finish. She should be safe from here. 2.13.4 is Hondo's time, and we have ourselves a new leader, and it is the German Anna Maria Ryder who leads by 5.4 seconds. Hanging on well, taking it right to the limit, really, you could say, just taking the risks in the verticales and then making the rhythm change just in the nick of time. Big 22, it's the defending Paralympic Super Combined Champions, oh, no. Molly Jepsen, and she's down straight out the start hut. Oh, dearie oh, I don't me. Think she can believe it. That is an absolute shocker hmm. for Jepsen. Huge disappointment for the defending champion. Oh, no, that wasn't in the game plan at all, was it? I'm sure we'll see it again in the slow-mo. It's, it's actually... It's, it's, not, it's not the most unusual thing. You see what actually happened? The rubber mat that the race officials put in place for the athletes to put their ski poles on to assist with the push-out of the gate. It's really, really sticky. And Molly, as she was going for a skate with the right foot out of the start gate, ran the tip of her ski, the front part of the edge, ran it onto that mat. And it just, it was like, it snared her there and she had no option but to go down uh, like a dolphin there on the, on the snow. That wasn't in the plan at all. Alana Ramsey of Canada, 2.78. Her advantage over Ada, our leader. And Ramsey, a bronze medalist in Pyeongchang in the Super Combined, is off to a, a good start, some good opening turns. And at the first time split, the lead is still there, but it's down to 
Yeah, Alana Ramsey showing off her all-round skills. On the same, or very close factor time to her current leader, so this is more or less a head-to-head -head competition. That was quick through that vertical section, but a little slow on the switch onto the left foot with a long sweeping turn that brings her across to the skier's right and into this final section of turns. Good though on the middle section because she finds half a second and 2.86 in the bank before the finishing pitch. 2.08 dead is the time of Ida and Ramsey lead by 1.67 seconds. Canada giving themselves a great chance of a medal here. Yeah, you can see Ramsey letting the skis go there. Minimal pressure on the skis, just letting them fly down the hill. You've got to take risks if you want to be competitive in this game. Bib number 10, Marie Boucher of France. 1.37 seconds, her advantage over our current leader, Alana Ramsey. And uh, Boucher, well, she's the reigning world champion oh, in this no. discipline. But she's had a shocker. She has had an absolute disaster. She's, well, she can climb back up, that will count, but the time is gone. Well, Marie knew that she had to do absolutely everything to try to get ahead of the other girls and also to put a little pressure on the girls who are following her because skiing with practically, well, with no advantage from the factor, Boucher has to essentially ski the fastest across the snow of anybody. She uh, needs to just still keep it calm now, you know, the, the chance of a medal in this discipline is gone. She's skiing to solve her damaged pride i'm sure so just needs to bring this one home safely and uh let this day put it behind her Boucher third 5.84 off the pace but that was real disappointment for her yeah as we said at the beginning of today's presentation there's going to be a lot of surprises a lot of mixing up of uh, the form guide here and this was this will be one of the bigger surprises Boucher really was expected to do well in this competition, beginning in all sorts of a tangle and then finally straddling this blue pole. But uh, she did complete the course well, so she will appear on the result sheet. But uh, that's no consolation to her right now. Eva Arsho of Sweden, 2.69. Her advantage over Ramsey, our current leader. Arsho, the world champion in slalom. So this is her strong discipline. She's lightning fast on the short skis. 4.92 up from 2.69. This is excellent skiing from our show. Yeah, and this is where the slalom, this is how a slalom specialist has to perform in this discipline. If you have a chance, you don't have much time. You've got a lot of turns to make up time, but you don't really have much time out there on the snow in the slalom leg. So she needs to make every single move count take every risk in the book she's caught a little on the tails this is going to be close 6.61 at the top boy oh, she hangs on and she's in by 9.82 seconds Arsho throws down the gauntlet to those at the top of the hill excellent run from her she's guaranteed herself a medal with that run because there's only one left at the top close run thing down on the final pitch Took every risk uh, and then one or two others as well. Oh, just dropped into that little hole. That's what caused the little upset. But there was a slightly wider gate following, so she was able to regain her balance and send those skis down towards the finish line. Zhang Mengqiu for the People's Republic of China, the quickest in the standing category after the Super G leg of the Super Combined, and she's trying to chase down Eva Arsho of Sweden, who laid down an electric run. Now that advantage of 2.25 has nearly all but disappeared. Just half a second left in the bank, and Zhang's in all sorts of trouble. I like the other Chinese ski. She's a little bit, uh, a little bit in the back seat. It's a risky tactic. The skis will run quickly on the flatter sections, but you don't really have enough control on the steeper part. And there's the result. It's gone red by 0.34. She needs something special down this finishing pitch. Uh, I don't think there's enough left in the course. Only these two vertical sets and then four open gates i think it's slipped by for zhang 156 51 comes goes and she goes second by one and a half seconds a medal for the people's republic of china
but it wasn't the goal that she had hoped for. She can't convert her Super G dominance on the slalom track. Technical errors costing her dearly on the steeper section there. Yeah, she'll be happy by the end of the day. I'm sure she's a little bit disappointed right now. She was hoping for greater things, especially after having such a healthy lead out of the Super G leg. So the results of the women's super combined standing race at Beijing 2022. And Eber Arsh of Sweden is the Paralympic champion with Zhang Mengyu of China in silver and Alana Ramsey of Canada in bronze. And now we have the recognition ceremony for the women's super combined slalom standing race. And uh, just waiting for Zhang Mengyu. The People's Republic of China, she's just come down, but. The great skiing from Eva Arsho in her first Paralympic Winter Games. And here come the medalists for the women's super combined slalom. Race and led out by Alana Ramsey of Canada. An excellent performance from Ramsey. And she picks up another Paralympic Winter Games medal. Alana Ramsey, third in the Super Combined in Pyeongchang. She's third in the Super Combined in Beijing. <laughs> Zhang Mengyu from the People's Republic of China picks up a silver medal. But on her Paralympic debut, Eva Arsho of Sweden wins the gold in the women's super combined standing race. Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games medalists. And the medalists will pick up their hardware later on, or actually tomorrow, in the medal plaza at the Yansing National Alpine. And that will be on day four. The women's super combined sitting slalom part of the super combined. And the six racers at the top of the hill go in reverse order from their finishing in the super G. So Shona Brownlee of Great Britain who was sixth quickest in the Super G will go first. And Muraoka Momoka of Japan will be last out of the start hut. The reigning Paralympic and world champion is Annalena Forster, bib number 24. She was fourth quickest in the Super G leg. She's six seconds to make up, but she is the defending slalom champion from 2018. So she will be looking forward to this run. Shona Brownlee of Great Britain in the start hut. And away goes the athlete from Great Britain. And the sit skiers have some really difficult turns ahead of them in this pattern of gates. 
Yeah, particularly down towards the steeper section where the gates are set quite close or closer together than up here on the top. Brownlee finding her way into the rhythm of the course. She's not really a slalom specialist, but um, as we've seen, this super combined event can produce a lot of surprises. And uh, I think we used the phrase earlier, you've got to be in it to win it. So completing the course is of utmost importance. And then just just really wait to see what happened to your competitors because we've seen a lot of mistakes so far today and the course is not course conditions are not getting any easier but brownlee's down and i don't know that she's going to make it back for that one i don't think she made it through the invisible line between the two blue gates that's right she needs to go back up the hill a little bit if she reverses back up and then able to traverse back over but uh, her race is run to all intents and purposes Say shown is not the absolute slalom specialist, more of a speed and giant slalom specialist. There's been a decent game for her so far, but that wasn't really on her game plan today. But she's back in the course uh, and we'll try our best to complete this one from here. Getting the applause and support from the side of the piece, but this is where it gets really, really difficult. It is so steep down here. Just got to keep it going, keep the ski swinging from one side to another. Now pick up the rhythm. It's good like a dance that's got a, a little break in it where you go to, through those four vertical gates. It's one, two, three, four, then a long swing. And then one, two short ones. One, two short ones, but she's out once again. Didn't get back for that blue. Not sure that she's got enough momentum to make it back up for that. Right. Makes the red, but I'm pretty certain she didn't get the blue, so that'll be a DQ despite well, her efforts. Well, she's ah, out no, of the red now anyway, now, so, so Brownlee out of the super combined. A couple of gates from home. That's a mistake at the top. Would uh, put her out of contention anyhow. So straight out of the finish area and back to the top we go. Tanaka Yoshiko of Japan with bib number 30. Next out of the start hut, 46 years of age. Fourth Paralympic Winter Games for her, debuted in 2006, but missed Pyeongchang in 2018. And she looked to put down a time to pressurize the remaining athletes at the top of the hill. There are four more after her. Tanaka. It's no mean feat getting these uh, Sitski rigs to work from one red pole to the next blue and back to the following red again. The skis, although they're short, 155 centimetres, uh, it's still very difficult to load the ski up without, uh, you know, without being able to make one turn carve well. It's difficult to get the next one to carve. So getting that rhythm, that swing from one side to another is really important. Once you have it, you've got to hold it. And then where you can feel brave enough to take a chance, then maybe just straighten it out. Here's an opportunity for Tanaka to go a little straighter. She takes a slightly more conservative approach, making certain of that final verticality before these two hairpins and then just four more turns following this one to get her safely to the finish. Here she comes, Tanaka has negotiated that. And 2.45.15, the time to beat for those at the top of the hill. Bib 24, Annalena Forster of Germany, 9.89, her advantage over Tanaka, our leader, but this is the reigning Paralympic and world champion in this discipline. She's also the Paralympic slalom champion, and look how she attacks this. She's got a different rig to the Super G rig. It's a slimmer, lighter rig, and she's gone from 9.89 to 16.51 up. Yeah, Forster showing us that as we go into the final four, we're really into a different league, ladies here. 
remaining in the competition, all able to make much quicker edge sets, more experience, more training time, more competition time at this level, showing through clearly. And Forster keeping the line high now. Here comes the final verticale, not far to go now. She shoot oh, a heavy edge set just before the this double hairpin section. That will have cost her a little. A couple of recoveries from Forster, enough in the bank, but 33.77. That is the time to beat now to 11.37. Is it enough, though, to get her onto the podium? Yeah, it's going to be a nail-biter. There's not an awful lot between the final four women and Forster setting. There's the risk-taking I talked about earlier, pointing the rig and the ski straight, but then having to get a bit of bounce to set the next turn up as the course begins to swing left to right again. Barbara van Bergen of the Netherlands, her advantage over our current leader, Annalena Forster, from the Super G run, 2.68 seconds. And van Bergen, the 43-year-old, who has a World Championship medal in downhill, but has uh, uh, the same rig that she was racing the speed event in, and that advantage of 2.68 is now a red light of 1.19. I wouldn't say Van Bergen's a slalom specialist, but a, a strong background in slalom. All of the skiers from the Netherlands have uh, really started their recent career in the technical events slalom and particularly and primarily in their uh, training center at Landgraf at their snow dome down there so Van Bergen no stranger to the slalom poles but that mistake at the top of the main pitch costing her rather dearly and I think uh, too much oh too another big mistake there I think she'll uh, be thinking twice about whether she's going to try to continue from here but that first mistake really leaving her too much to do to stay in contention, unfortunately. Uh, she's trying to come back across. Is she trying to go up? Well, the side slippers are going to have to watch out here because if she gets back up to that red gate, she needs to get the binding. No, I think it's it's so steep, this part of the track. It's very, very difficult. And Van Bergen decides that uh, she won't make it back to that gate and she is out huge disappointment for van bergen she is a dnf in the super combined sitting race Liu Setong from the People's Republic of China. Her advantage over our current leader, Annalena Forster of Germany. 3.23 seconds from the Super G run held earlier to, on day three of these Paralympic Winter Games. And as she comes to the first tie split, has she still got the green light? 3.23, the advantage, but it's gone all the way down to 0.37. Well, we know Annalena Forster was almost flawless, I would say, on the steep section here. So Liu can't afford any mistakes right now. This looks to be a really solid run. I don't think she's if she's losing anything. It's uh, just a few hundreds. Oh well, maybe a little more. 2.15 now. The wrong side of the clock for Liu Sitong, who was uh, China's only al para alpine skier in Pyeongchang. Well, she's got a lot of teammates this time round in Beijing. But Liu has a chance to get on the podium here because Forster Titanaka is 33 seconds and Liu will go second, 4.47 off the pace. Yeah, a really measured run there on the lower part, on the steeper, more difficult section. Took a few risks up the top. It didn't exactly pay off. Some very nice skiing, though, as we see her coming over the brink onto the main pitch. Maroka Momoka of Japan 
out of the start, had the quickest racer after the Super G part of this super combined race. Her advantage over the defending Paralympic champion and current leader, Annalena Forster of Germany, 6.07 seconds. And at the first time split, she will see that her advantage has dropped to 3.51. Momoka going a much rounder line than Annalena Forster. She needs to keep this rhythm going, but she really wants to be a bit closer to the gate. She needs to travel a shorter distance if she's to challenge for top spot. There's a chance for her to run straight, but she drops into the verticale a little late, so just has to keep the brakes on to manage to negotiate those vertical gates, which are very close set together. Still has the green light by 0.74, but this is getting really close, and Muraoka is going to have to come up with something special on these steep final turns. And the time of Forster, 2.11.37, and it's going to be close, but not close enough. She's outside it, she's second by just over three quarters of a second, and not to be for Moroka, but she is on the podium. Ah, oh, that was the ski. She was, you could tell she was, like, she looked nervous at the top, looked like a little more tense than she did in this morning's Super G. Uh, maybe that tension was what prevented her from just taking the risk and letting the ski run a little more. She knew she could ski at home for a medal, and uh, yeah, what a choice to have to make. How much risk, but that's really what it's all about in alpine skiing, and particularly in this the all rounder discipline of Super Combined. Confirmation then of the final results in the women's super combined sitting race. Annalena Forster of Germany defends her Paralympic title from Pyeongchang in 2018. Muraoka Momoka of Japan is second. And Liu Sitong from the People's Republic of China is third. Just four of the six racers finish the slalom part of the super combined. So the recognition ceremony for the women's super combined sitting race. And they're led out by Liu Sitong. Our second medal of these Paralympic Winter Games. And Alina Forster of Germany finally gets one over on Moroka Momoka. Both Forster and Moroka winning their third medal in three races. In third place, picking up the bronze medal, it's Liu Sitong from the People's Republic of China. And the silver medalist in the women's super combined sitting race from Japan, her third medal of these games, it is uh, Muraoka Momoka. And the reigning Paralympic and world champion, Annalena Forster, is once again on the top step of the podium. She is the gold medalist of Beijing 2022. And look what it means to her. She trailed in behind Muraoka in the downhill and the Super G. But it's third time lucky for Forster as she comes away with her first gold of Beijing 2022 with a storming second run charge, making up over six and three quarter seconds to move from fourth to first. The men's super combined vision impaired slalom run of day three of the Paralympic Winter Games Beijing 2022. And the racers go in reverse order from how they finished in the Super G part of this race. Nine competitors from eight national Paralympic committees at the top of the hill. And well, this is a 
really close race. 1.9 seconds separating the top six. The defending Paralympic champion, Milosov Haros, bib number four. He was sixth quickest after the first run. The world champion, Yassante Laplace, with bib number three. He was the quickest. But in between, you've got the likes of uh, Neil Simpson, Jakob Krakow, Giacomo Bertagnoli, and Johannes Eichner. This is going to be absolutely really close. It could go anyway. And the next uh, half an hour or so will be absolutely fascinating. And Lena Forster being congratulated in the finish area, having picked up yet another gold medal. Moko Momoko on the radio. It, it's an individual sport, but it's also a team sport, and she'll be feeding back up the hill to the male Jap Japan racers who have yet to go in the slalom leg to tell them what to expect. And it's a regular occurrence in alpine skiing. Huang ming Yu and Han se Hyun from Korea will get this men's super combined vision impaired slalom run underway. Ninth quickest after the super G run early on on day three. And there's a bit of a gap building up between guide and racer. Uh, huge gap. There's actually a maximum limit in these lads uh, in the technical events, and these lads are right on that limit. Han needs just to make certain that his athlete isn't any further behind him or they could risk disqualification for being too far apart. That's good. They've closed the gap up now. And uh, Wang Ming Yu has a B3 skill with a, a degree of vision that will enable him to sense and see where his guide is. Just gets caught but, out on yeah, the terrain they, change. Yeah, they can't afford to get too far apart. Otherwise, that's exactly what will happen. The, the athlete following the guide doesn't have enough of a cue, enough of a, 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 a point to follow. And uh, when that goes, the confidence goes as a result. 2.11.43 for Huang. There were some heart-in-the-mouth moments. It's down on his feet, which is the main thing. Yeah, a lot of recoveries down there. Just managed to get forward and get that left foot back underneath his body to regain the balance in our slow-mo picks. Logan Leach and his guy, Julien Petit from Canada. Next up, the start up their advantage over our current leader, Huang of uh, Korea. Uh, 2.67 seconds. Oh. As they come to the first split, that 2.67 second advantage is up to 3.36. Good solid skiing from our Canadian pair, keeping the rhythm, keeping the distance between them constant. And at the next time split, 4.43. They dealt with that verticality really well. This is where it, it gets really steep, and Leach has done well. Good skiing from Leach and his guy Petit down this final pitch. And Leach will take the lead here. Time of 2.06.27, 5.15, the right side of the clock. Good work. Quick look back at Jason Leach here. Very good timing from the Canadian pairing. A little bit in the back seat and getting dropped inside just before the pitch. He's lucky he made that mistake up on the flats and not on the steeper section. Patrick Jensen from Australia and his guide Amelia Hodgson, the next to challenge. And their advantage over our current leader, Logan Leach, is 1.45 seconds. And Jensen will be keen to move things up a gear. He's more of a slalom skier than a speed skier. Oh, but he's just been a bit too ambitious there. Going too straight. He missed the clear with his, uh, with his right hand. 
and the gates going between the athletes legs results in a disqualification a quick look back he was doing exactly the right thing we said he was comfortable in the slalom boards but just lost the balance ever so slightly and the tip of that inside right ski running the wrong side of the control gate and he's out of the competition a huge disappointment for patrick jensen and amelia hodgson yeah, they were really going for it. You could see they were they were after making an impression on the top standings. Pip number four from Slovakia is Miroslav Haros and Maros Hudik. His guide 8.28 of an advantage over our current leader Logan Leach after the first run. Now Haros is the defending Paralympic champion. Oh, he's out. But he is out, that, and, well, he's going to try and climb back up. Yeah, he, you know, they, they know that a lot, a lot, there's still a lot to play for, even though you may be a long way out. We've seen in the previous uh, previous categories there are going to be a lot of fallers in this men's visually impaired. Well, chances are there will be a few more fallers in this uh, men's visually impaired competition. So he knows it's important to actually make it cleanly to the finish. 1.61, if he can ski this bottom section. I, th I think he's, Gabby, he's really going for it now because he's trying to make up the time and somehow gets through that royal flush yeah. and he makes up the time to three hundredths. <laughs> That's pretty remarkable, but he's got to stay on his feet. That's the main thing. Guide having to slow down and wait for him again, but he should be okay from here as long as he keeps reaching forward, keeps ahead oh, of the no, momentum, but no. He's yes. out. He was just getting too hot. He was absolutely throwing everything at it, wasn't he? Yeah, right, oh, you know, just almost touching distance from the finish line. I think five gates from, five, six gates from home. Harouse is out and another DNF. He'll be disappointed with that. But uh, you can't blame him for, he gets full marks for his fighting ability, really battling it all the way down. The defending Paralympic champion, Miroslav Harouse is out. So disappointment for him. Neil Simpson and his brother Andrew Simpson, his guide from Great Britain, their advantage over Logan Lee to Canada, 8.43. The British pair fifth quickest Ooh. after the first run. They've set off. Yeah, that's good. Neil's caught up on Andrew, and uh, this is a bit like we see sometimes from these lads, put pressure on each other. They just have to keep a lid on it. That's the thing. And it grows to 10.11. And Neil Simpson doing a great job in his first Paralympic Winter Games. But this is the tricky section and the steep finishing pitch. And they are 11.33 up. Yeah, they need to hang on to that advantage. And to do that, they need to keep an early high line, but not fight the hill down the pitch here. Looks good so far. Neil finding a very direct line through the verticale, almost straddling, but it looks clean to me. It's very tight, very fast in the line. 206.27, 13.46, the right side of the clock. It's a good run from Neil Simpson. And he will go into provisional gold medal position. Quick look back at the slalom skills of the Simpson brothers. The brother Andrew setting a lovely rhythm here, and his younger brother Neil right on his tail. Good work, lads. Jakob Krakow of Slovakia and his guy Branislav Brozman. They have just eight hundredths of a second to play with over our current leader, Neil Simpson of Great Britain. So Simpson has laid down the challenge to those that follow him who can respond. And Simpson's run was very much error free, I would say. It was right on the limit, so the pressure is on. And it tells immediately as the green light goes to red by nearly two thirds of a second. A good rhythm now from Krakow. Keep it going solid. And he finds a bit of time, but not enough. He's got to find half a second down this final pitch. Krakow and his guy making slightly heavy work of it. They need to let the skis run if they're to challenge for the lead here. 152, 81, and Krakow! Oh, well, he stayed on his feet, and it's not to be. One and a half seconds off the pace.
He knew exactly what he had to do. He had to take something from that final pitch to try to get some pace on the run into the finish. But he let the skis run just a little too early. And on this final tricky combination, here it comes on the final tricky combination. It's a double hairpin. Two pairs of vertical gates set straight down the hill. The skis got away from him and he was lucky to stay on his feet. At least he's in the finish, but the lead has disappeared from him. Giacomo Bertignoli of Italy and his guide Andrea Ravelli and their advantage over Neil Simpson of Great Britain, just 16 hundredths of a second. Bertignoli was the slalom champion in 2018, so he likes the short boards and he's attacking this track, trying to pull in Neil Simpson and he's got nearly a second in hand now. Yeah, Bertignoli actually an inspiration for Neil Simpson. He's one of the sort of technical role models and you can see why Bertignoli doing some very clean turns here. And it's up to 1.79 now the advantage Bertignoli excellent skiing. Couple of little wobbles there as it comes to these final combinations but looking solid now within sight of the line. Oh this is impressive skiing from Bertignoli and he gets the lead by 3.01 seconds that was nearly faultless from the Italian. Yeah, under a lot of pressure as well, the Italian pair kept, kept a couple of calm heads. Look at the pace they're carrying us up here. Just letting the skis fly, barely touching the snow with the edges, just enough to deflect the momentum, deflect the direction from one side to another. Johannes Eigner of Austria at the top of the hill, bib number one, six hundredths of a second, his advantage over our leader Giacomo Bertignoli of Italy. Eigner second quickest after the Super G part of this Super Combined race. Now the first time split and the advantage is no longer, it's 1.24, the wrong side of the clock. Fleischmann doing a great job with the guiding, calling the rhythm, hop, hop, just calling the rhythm, just like a conductor with an orchestra. Great work from this Austrian pair. They're quick through here. 1.74, it's grown by half a second through that section. Competitive stuff nonetheless. Just a little late going into the long verticale, so had to hold the edges on to maintain the line. 149.8 has come and gone, and Eigner goes second, 2.18 off the pace. And Bertignoli knows he has a medal, so does Eigner, because there's just one left at the top of the hill. Quick look back at this long four-gate flush heavy edge set on the exit a couple of tenths or perhaps more lost there by Eigner but a pretty solid run nonetheless knew he had a medal within his grasp and kept they both kept calm enough to be able to achieve that yes on de la place of France and his guy Valentin Giron won 1.59 of a second their advantage over our leader Bertagnoli and De La Place in his first Winter Paralympic Games, looking to try oh, so and win his first medal, but he's out. The mistake from De La Place. Oh, and what a disappointment. Had the green light there, they still had the best part of two quarters of a second to their advantage, and they didn't ever really seem to find the rhythm right at the top of the course. This is actually better skiing here now, but uh, I think they're... Chance is going to maybe up to squeeze a third, but the gap has grown. 5.5 now, that's fifth place on the hill. That too much time lost trying to regain the gate. And he's just throwing everything at it now to La Place as he has to. But it's going to be in vain, I fear. 1 3, 9.8, that's come and gone. And De La Place will. Uh, well, one. Well, we didn't get a finish time for him. He's gone 156.74, he's gone fifth. Let's have a look at what went wrong up here. The boys were doing exactly the right thing, but just De La Place, he is on the de just dipping back a little onto his heels. The two skis coming too close together as a, a result and running straight just when he needed a little bit more direction out to the left of the course.
So the final results of the men's super combined vision impaired and it's Giacomo Bertagnoli of Italy, who is the Paralympic champion, Johannes Eigner of Austria, the silver medal, and Neil Simpson of Great Britain picks up the bronze as seven of the nine finish the men's super combined vision impaired slalom part of the super combined. Now the recognition ceremony for the men's super combined vision impaired race. And the race is led out by Neil Simpson. So in third place, picking up their second medal in just over 24 hours, it's the brothers Neil and Andrew Simpson of Great Britain, bronze medalists in the men's super combined vision impaired. Silver medalists and collecting the sweep of medals in the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games, Johannes Eigner of Austria picks up a silver. And the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games super combined champion is Giacomo Bertignoli of Italy and his guide Andrea Ravelli. Their third Paralympic gold medal after picking up the slalom and giant slalom gold in Pyeongchang. And Bertignoli, well, he will be a force to be reckoned with when we get to the tech races later on. The men's super combined standing race, the slalom part with the Super G having been raced this morning. And 30 races at the top of the hill from 15 national Paralympic committees. The defending uh, Paralympic champion Alexei Bugiev is not here, but the reigning world champion Arthur uh, Boucher with bib number 12 was the quickest after the first run. He was also the silver medalist in 2018. Can he go one better here? The 30 finishers from the Super G leg have been flipped. And so the slowest Chen will go first. The quickest Boucher will go 30th. And it's going to be really fascinating to see how this course holds up as we go through these 30 runners in the men's super combined standing race. So we're almost ready to go in this, the penultimate gold medal to be decided on day three of these Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games. Super combined, as the name suggests, combines the times from the Super G run in the morning and the slalom run in the afternoon with the quickest winning the gold medal. And it'll be at Chen Xinjun in the People's Republic of China that gets us underway. <laughs> Chen Xinjun of the People's Republic of China gets the men's super combined slalom part of the race underway. And he's full out attack as he looks to make up as much time as possible from the Super G leg. Good work on the top section. Just to be a little bit uh, more on top of the skis, I would suggest, as the course steepens, becomes the first big rhythm change. Big sweep and turn here. Oh, oh and it's a, a straddle. straddle. Uh, just didn't get quite enough direction. He needed. He had his body in the right position as he went to make the left-handed turn after the big, long right-handed sweeper, but he hadn't taken quite enough direction. On the tip of the left ski, runs on the wrong side of the following pole. 
And uh, here comes the long sweeping turn past the second gate in the double to blue and then rolls onto the red and it's a straddle. Tyler Carter, the United States of America, bib number 44, 28 years of age in his third Paralympic Winter Games. He was 29th quickest after the Super G pars of the Super Combined. And at the first split, 137.6, they're looking comfortable over the boards. Got a solid rhythm in the top section. Here's this first difficult rhythm change. Oh, and it catches him out. Another one who skis out of the course. And huge disappointment for Carter. Another DNF. It's a complex section there. You have a vertical section, a single gate coming out of it, out to the skier's left, and then a long sweeping curve to the right through a double. Let's have a look again. It was coming on the entry to the verticale. Here he goes. Just gets pushed onto his heels a little and uh, can't make it back for the little left footer, the final, the final turn in the vertical part of that combination. Tokai Masahiko of Japan with bib number 38 on track. The 48-year-old in his third Paralympic Winter Games. But uh, a world champion in slalom back in 2004. What can he do here? that tricky verticale. Seems to be a bit of a rut building in there. Yeah, the trouble is on those vertical gates because the impulse, the pressure the skier applies has to be applied so quickly. You get these little holes, sharp holes forming, so those are going to cause problems for the remaining skiers. Takai, though, sets the time that everyone's looking to beat, 208.54. This is new... Xiao Ji from the People's Republic of China. And uh, he was 27th quickest after the first run. With uh, 1.6 of an advantage over Tokai. Pressure coming just a little late in these turns, I would suggest. And a lot of speed bled off through the verticale. Now, nearly one and a half seconds off the pace, so needs to let it run down here if he can. Not a huge amount of the course left, that's the challenge. Got to point them straight and try to limit the damage now. 208.54, he's just outside by 0.4, he found a yeah. second. Saved his best turns to the very end, the last three turns. If he'd managed a, another 20 of those above, it would have been a very different story, but... Yeah. Marcus Nilsson Grasto of... Norway, 1.69, his advantage over Tokai of Japan, our current leader. And the advantage is down to 0.42 at the first split. Keeps it solid, no pulls, so holding that rhythm. He's just got his legs and his balance required by his upper body to rely on. Well, the green light has gone red. Just needs to keep it solid to the finish, not much he can do about the time that's lost. 208.54, just goes by. Third, 0.78 of a second off the pace. Hey! Jules Segers of France, bib number 40, the uh, next to go. Sagers, 19 years of age, but he's out. Now, let's have a look to see what happened there. Now, this is bib number 41. This is Arvid Skogland, the 18-year-old in his first Paralympic Winter Games. Solid top section from the young Swede. This is good. Full out attack from Scotland and at the first bit, 3.67. Brilliant 
opening turns. Needs to stay forward now, keep that fast feet action going, because this is where the course gets more difficult as the pitch gets steeper. Gets that weight forward through that difficult section. This is good work, 3.73, still got the green light. Yeah. Oh, he's, the weight now is a little bit more in the middle of the skis. You can see the skis windscreen wiping, washing from side to side. He's still going quickly, but is it enough? 208.54, yes, it is enough because he leads by nearly five seconds. Scoggin, our new leader in the men's super combined. Davide Bendotti of Italy, the next on track. His advantage just four hundredths of a second over our leader. And he gets popped out of the track and yeah. he is out. Davide Bendotti just trying to be a little bit too ambitious there. And as a three tracker, just with the one ski, there's no chance to get uh, another ski out to help you make the recovery. You really have to be well balanced over the ball of your foot all the way top to bottom. You need to take the risks as well, but then that's, that's ski racing, and uh, particularly in the slalom discipline. Sun Yan Long from the People's Republic of China. 0.54, his advantage over Skogland of Sweden, our current leader. A risky start tactic there. The Athens actually meant to be standing still before they launch themselves through the warm, but soon taking a bit of a chance, I would suggest, but well focused and running with a really solid rhythm now down towards the middle section of the course. Oh, he's going at some pace through there and he's got a lot of time, 1.32, but this is the steep challenging part. Yeah, and a couple of big mistakes. You could see it quite clearly. He got bounced wide of the line. We'll have to wait till he gets to the finish to see how much damage he's been, has been done. He's letting them go straight here. 203, 57, he's in, 1.68. For Sun Yang Long from the People's Republic of China. Jesse Keith for the United States of America, just six one hundredths of a second, his advantage, and that has grown to fourteen hundredths of the first split. Keith. Good rhythm, a lot of extra upper body movement though. He has to try to keep that under control. Oh yeah, with Nick, that's what made the ski break away in the second half of the long left footer after the verticale. Can't afford another mistake like that. Here comes Keith then trying to get inside to a 189. And Jesse Keith lets them run and he is inside by 15 hundredths of a second. Finds over half a second on that final pitch. Martin France of Slovakia next on track with bid number 29 in his fifth Paralympic Winter Games. And France is a new aid that he's got, modified hand guards to help him keep his arms forward and get the gates out of the way. 3-7, the advantage now for him. It's been a long day having the leg strength and the freshness left in the legs to make these quick moves is part of the challenge of the super combined discipline. But the green light goes red by nearly half a second, but can France pull it back down this final pitch? Yeah, he looks to be a little bit tired. He's doing his best to stay over the skis. He's got to keep pushing forward, keep the skis under control. He's got to make it to the line to be in with a chance. To a 174 is Keith's time. That has passed, and he will go third. 202.9. Fourth quickest on the slalom. Yander Kress of Germany, the next on track with bib number 32, the 21 year old. Very quick through those top vertical turns. And he has the same advantage at the first split as he did in the start hut. A little mistake just after that split time. That'll have cost a tenth or two. He's put the mistake behind him, though. He's back on the early line. Well ahead of the action on top of the ski there. Just gets on top of it in the nick of time. But he needs to find some time down here. At least a quarter of a second required, but good work. Just a little scrappy, the pressure coming just after the gate rather than above it. 2174 is gone, he's dead. 1.07 off the pace. Oh. 
the Chukule of Australia, the next to go. His advantage over Jesse Keefe of the United States, our current leader, 0.81 of a second. Oh, good. He right on the limit. My goodness, that was some recovery. Well, he pay, pays dividends, though, because he's 1.16 now, the right side of the clock. A little bit wider on these turns. He wants to get back onto that direct line that did him so good on the top. Now he's found it. Quick shift on to that outside ski. Good turn by Gurley. And extends the lead by another 0.15 to 1.31. Nice skiing from Gourlay down this finishing pitch. He's right on the edge and he just about makes it. And he leads by two and a half seconds nearly. Great skiing from Gourlay. <laughs> Oscar Burnham of France. 0.24 of an advantage over Mitchell Gourlay of Australia from the Super G leg. Fast and furious stuff here in the slalom stage of the competition. Burnham. Well, he looks really good, and he's got a lot of time up from 0.24 to 0.92. Very clean skiing after the second split. Here comes this verticale into the double tricky combination. Oh, makes it look effortless, does Burnham. This is really good skiing. Nice clean turns through the bird. Just a little late, but I think he should have enough in hand. Quick feet to get through those gates, and we have a new leader. That's an excellent run. Leads by 2.16. Adam Hall of New Zealand, the next out, the start up, his advantage over Burnham, 0.43 of a second. And Hall, well, he is a two-time slalom champion at the Paralympic Winter Games. And extends the lead. 0.66. He's a master of precision, is Adam Hall. He's at 82.10% for his factor. He uses that to good advantage, but it means he has to be millimeter perfect. And so far, so good for Adam Hall. Up to 1.38, yet more great skiing from Adam Hall in Beijing. Got a point at straight now for the finish. Try to take some last momentum in his final four gates. 157.10, he's home, and he's home by 2.33 seconds. We've seen some amazing skiing in the last couple of runs. Misawa Hiraku of Japan, his advantage just 15 hundredths of a second over our current leader, Adam Hall of New Zealand. Misawa has to be very direct, has to go straight to see Deers, get that single ski just around the gate, no more. It's gone red by a quarter of a second, but he's giving it absolutely everything. Just a little wider than his ideal, he's a tiny bit late, the full shot doesn't really show that, he's out of that difficult vertical to the double. Good work from Misawa. But is it enough to get in front of Hall? 154.77. No is the answer. Misawa will go third. 2.98 off the pace. If number 17 is Federico Palizzari, a bronze medalist in the super combined at the World Championships in Lillehammer in January of this year. Stomps his way down this top section, a real flyer of a top section here from Pelsari. And he goes from 0.18 to 0.32, the right side of the clock. Keeps the rhythm solid here. Here comes this tricky double gate towards the second split. Well, he made it look pretty easy, but he's gone from 0.32 in the green to 1,200s in the red. And after the double, he's been a little bit late. He's still late into that four gate flash through the double here, but it's okay. He's left it too late. Second, 1.12 off the pace. Disappointment for Pelizzani. Spencer Woods, 12th quickest from the Super G leg, and his advantage over Adam Hall, 0.45 of a second. Skiing with bib number 27, 
And his first World Cup podium was in a slalom. He was third in Zagreb, so what can he do here? He's got to clean these turns up. He's lost most of it as his advantage in those top section, the top section rather, because he's running late. You can see the heavy edge set below the gate. That uh, series of errors sort of continuing. Doesn't quite get it clean on the double gate. And that is now a big red light at two and a half seconds. Just has to hang on here, limit the damage, and watch what the other competitors still to come can do. Good job here on this double hairpin section. Solid edge sets to close the runoff. 154.77, sixth, 5.33 off the pace for Spencer Wood. Bib 24. Thomas Gorka of Austria. 1.07, his advantage over Adam Hall. Now, Gorka was fifth in the slalom in 2014. He was a silver medalist in the slalom at the World Championships in 2017. So what can the Austrian do on this run? And he's expect absolutely fireworks. flying. Yeah, expect fireworks here. Tommy Gorka is one of the most determined, most ambitious competitors on the tour and really wants to make his mark in the slalom stage of the competition. Look how straight he's going here. Got to get this double. Drops in a little late. It's a heavy edge set. He's still got the green light, but it's a very small one. Five hundredths. What can he do about it in these closing gates? One hairpin, two hairpins, four open gates to go. He runs as straight as he dares. It's not enough. He's outside third. 1.15 off the pace. A really exciting run from Gokka, but it's not enough. Alan Lindstrom of Sweden, the next to go. 1.11, his advantage over Adam Hall. And Lindstrom, well, his best Paralympic Winter Games result was in slalom in 2018. So let's see what he can do here. Another strong start from the next Swedish skier. Swedish lads really going for it on this top part. Lindstrom flying as he crosses the first split. And he's lost time. Now just three quarters of a second in hand. A little bit late, gets dropped low onto his heels of the skis and low in the line as a result. No time bleeds away. Yeah, nearly a whole second goes in that section. Stays on top of it now, needs to bring this one home safe and salvage what he can. 154.77, Lindstrom goes fourth, 1.29 off the pace. Pave number 13, Roger Puig Davi, 1.26 his advantage over Adam Hall, ninth quickest from the Super G run. Good work on this top part, is to use his factor time to his advantage. He needs to stay on top of his skis doesn't have the leg strength of some of the other athletes behind him, so he can't afford to get himself out of shape, he can't afford to lose the line. He needs to have a measured run, but still take some risk. Well, he takes risks through that verticale section, and he's got the green light by three quarters of a second. Final verticale, safely negotiated. Here comes the double hairpin, four open gates. Oh, no, oh but he's, he's down! Creed Davy was so close. To the end, he was, what, four gates four from gates home? from home. He's going to hike for that third last one, which he slid by. So he'll still get on to the results list. Needs to get the boots above it. There it is. That's it. Uh, that's a shame because he, he, he skied a real solid run there for the majority of the course. Just got inside a little bit as he came out of that final double here, or the second of the double hairpin. Thomas Charles Walsh of the United States of America, 1.39 the advantage over Adam Hall, our leader, eighth quickest from the Super G run. Walsh running very straight, just rolling the knees from side to side, minimal deflection of momentum, and it's translating into fast skiing. Extends the green light to his Walsh through this really difficult verticale section. He does really well, and it's up to 1.69. Bit of a slam there on the left ski just after the split. 
will have slowed him down a bit, but he's on the pitch again, so that strong technical execution of his. Looking good now as he heads for the line. Here comes Walsh. He's Ooh. outside by 11 hundredths. Oh, Adam Hall survives the challenge of Thomas Charles Walsh. Bib 21, Nico Pajancic of Austria. A 25 year old in his second Paralympic Winter Games. And he is seventh quickest after the first run. And he's got nearly two seconds in hand, but half of that is now gone. Yeah, he's not such a slalom specialist as Pajancic, but uh, he's, he knows. He's an experienced competitor now, a lot of mileage under his feet. He knows that as long as he has a respectable run, makes it to the finish, and then he can watch the others and maybe just pop a, a sneaky chance at the podium. 0.36 coming into these final gates. And Pajancic is outside Hall's time, and he goes six, 2.3 off the pace. Uh, shrug of the shoulders, he knows that's too much. He let too much slip by in the slalom part of the comp. Bib number 16, Thomas Phil of Austria, a silver medalist in the slalom in 2006 on debut, but 1.63 his advantage over Adam Hall, our current leader. Now, another athlete who really needs to stay on top of the skis is an LW9. Oh, no. Thomas, oh. Straddle that uh, pops the right ski off. And Thomas Fell is out of the super combined. Real disappointment for the 35 year old. And it is a DNF for Thomas Fell. Now quickly reunited with his ski. And Fell will make his way to the bottom of the hill, but not to be for him today. And then there were five left at the top of the hill. Yeah, as we expected, there's been quite a few DNFs. A difficult condition, but I think the high pressure of competition here at the Paralympic Winter Games starting to jangle the nerves of even the most experienced competitors from the the world circuit. Manuel Bordnex of France, 1.68, his advantage from the Super G in the first run of the Super Combined. He was fifth quickest. What has Bordnex got in the locker here? Good few top turns. He loses 0.99 of his advantage. Difficult ask with the with these. He's, he's, it's a very short set, and by that I mean there's only about 10 meters between the majority of the gates, so quick movements from foot to foot are required. And now the red light by 1.84. Let them run straight here. You can maybe shave a tenth out of that. But no. 154.77 goes into ninth position, and then there were four. Bib number 14 is Robin Kusch of Switzerland. 2.19, his advantage from the Super G run over Adam Hall of New Zealand, our current leader. Uh, Kush more of a speed specialist. You can see his tact or his technique here. He's a little bit further back than some of the slalom specialists may have looked. It's risky, but as long as he can keep switching from foot to foot, keep the momentum going forward, stay on his feet in shorts, then he could be in contention. Well, he found a tenth of a second in the opening turns, but he's been pushed a little wide in some of these following turns and now has only half a second to play with and is in trouble on the steeps. Oh, that was a big, uh, big dump of momentum there. Got trapped on the inside ski, couldn't get that new outside ski under his body. 
Uh, I think that may be his chance of a top spot gone. 154.77 goes, he's into sixth place. Disappointment for Kush. So four remain at the top of the hill. The first of them is this man. Bib number 22. Santali Kivari of Finland, the 21-year-old who was the overall slalom World Cup winner in 2019-2020. Now, what can Kivri do here? Can he haul in or reel in Adam Hall? 2.21 of the first split. Yeah, so far, so good. As we say, a real slalom specialist. You can see Broom full of confidence in these short turns. The rhythm being executed very well. But my money could be a little bit punchier from turn to turn. Well, it's dropped now to 1.33, but he has a lot to play with still. Last couple of turns now, 154.77, the time of Adam Hall, and Kibari is inside, just by 0.29. <laughs> and he will guarantee himself a medal, because there are only two remaining at the top of the hill. Bib number 39 is Theo Gamor. Nine hundredths of a sec, nine tenths of a second. His advantage over Santelli Kivari of Finland, our current leader. Yeah, this will be a close run thing. Gamor does have a little more advantage from the factor, but it's ultimately all about the skiing. Theo knows he has to push as hard as he can here. He's the downhill Super G and Giant Slalom champion from 2018 in Pyeongchang. But, uh, his other medals have been in speed events. So this is a real challenge for him as he gets nearly caught out. He is caught out. Uh, yeah. For the 9-2s, this really short set of gates, the short distance between the gates makes it real tricky. He's right back in there like all of the Swiss team. He's a, a tough competitor. He won't give it up without a fight, no matter what the end result's going to be. Well, 154.48, that's come and gone. And sadly for Gamor, there'll be no medal in the uh, Super Combined. 14th position, 6.86. Adam Hall has himself a medal because there's just one remaining. Uh, to Gamor. The fatigue setting in and taking its toll on the lower half of that run. Bib number 12, our leader from the Super G part of the Super Combined, Arthur Boucher of France, and a really big advantage over our current leader, Santari Kivari, of 2.07 seconds. She looking like he's got a fresh set of legs on here this afternoon, despite this morning's work. This is great slalom skiing from the young Frenchman. And he's gone from 2.07 to 3.4, and Boucher, the reigning world champion in this discipline, and silver medalist in Pyeongchang, has 3.8 to play with. And say it's all going to be about whether he's got enough in his legs, enough in the neurological system to keep him moving quickly from here to the line. 154.48 to take the gold medal, and he's in by 4.22 seconds. A brilliant run from Boucher, <laughs> and he has himself a gold medal. And an excellent run from him. <laughs> And Bodnex, the first to congratulate his teammate. Great to see such camaraderie. But Boucher yes! is the Paralympic champion. Confirmation then of the men's super combined standing race. Arthur Boucher of France is the Paralympic champion. Santelli Kibari of Finland takes the silver. And Adam Hall of New Zealand, a big run from him, moving from 15th into third place in the slalom part of the super combined.
So we just wait the recognition ceremony for the men's super combined slalom standing race. And uh, here they come out onto the field of play now, led out by Adam Hall. And what a fantastic slalom run he put down to move up through the field and grab himself a podium place. So Adam Hall, bronze medalist four years ago in Pyeongchang, is bronze medalist again in Beijing. Adam Hall in New Zealand on the podium. Silver medalist, Santeri Kiberi of Finland, the 21-year-old. Arthur Boucher of France is the Paralympic champion, having come second in Pyeongchang. He's now gone one better in Beijing. A second gold of these Beijing Paralympic Winter Games for Arthur Boucher of France. The men's super combined sitting race at the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games. The last of the gold medals to be decided on day three. And the start list, 18 racers from 10 national Paralympic committees at the top of the hill. The defending Paralympic champion, Jeroen Kampschere was third quickest after the first run. The current world champion, René Del Silvestre, he skied out in run one in the uh, Super G. And so it is all set up nicely. Can Jesper Pedersen, the quickest man after run one, bring home the gold medal for Norway in the slalom section of this Super Combined? Ravi Jugan of the United States of America with bib number 67 gets the slalom run of the men's super combined city race underway. 18th quickest after the first run. The athletes go in reverse order. So Jugan first and our quickest racer, Pedersen, will be 18th out the start hut. Uh, Drogan gives us a first chance to see what this course is going to look like for the men's sitting category. So Silverweight, it's a short series of turns, short turns, very close together. And uh, that means the sit skiers have to set the rhythm and keep it going all the way top to bottom. Down and out, sadly, is uh, Drugani won't make it back up there. And it's far too steep. No, he wraps this one up, saves some energy for the remaining competitions in these Paralympic Winter Games. But uh, I think he's the first of what I'm sorry to say will be a, a few casualties in the sit skiers here. Well, that pellet of Switzerland. The next to go with bib number 60, his second Paralympic Winter Games. His best finish was in slalom in 2018. So let's see how he goes here. Ooh. Nice recovery, just managed to get the regain the rhythm on the exit from the verticale. Using the facilities provided, the bottom of the uh, pole to get back on track. Good work from Pellet. And he's. Grinds to halt, but that's okay. Yep. He's allowed to do that as long as he eventually passes the gates. Billy working hard to keep in this course. He's got the rhythm back under control now here. It's all important as the terrain tips steeper. Little chance to catch his breath here through this long double. 
Now onto this really steep section. Missed the entry to the f these first four gates before these uh, one, two, three oh, vertical oh, gates oh, oh, are oh, oh, very, very wide. So uh, the skiers do need to come in there with a lot of commitment if they're to be enable themselves to find a rhythm and find anything like an attacking line for that final pitch. It really is steep. It demands precision, but a lot of commitment as well. Han Sang Min from Korea, the next to go with bib number 58, the 42 year old. He made his Paralympic Winter Games debut back in 2002 in Salt Lake City. He's a silver medalist in the giant slalom in 2002. Let's see how he fares on these tighter slalom gates. Okay, on the top section, getting right in there, chopping the gate with his body, getting the ski carving, or at least cutting underneath the gate, keeping the height in the turn. If you, oh, just oh. as I say that, he gets dropped just before the vertical. He's lucky he managed to negotiate the vertical. He's round the double as well. But here come these wide gates. See how much they swing across the hill. It's getting rutty and bumpy there, so you have to come in with good direction and early, have that direction early before you get to ski, get the ski right beside the gate. Han, couple of gates from home, and he will set a time. 2.07.09 is the time everyone is shooting for now. Next out the start, Han, it's Lubra. Degond of France with bib number 55, his first Paralympic, Paralympic Winter Games. And his advantage over Han, our leader, 0.81 in the start hut. And that has now gone out to 1.4. Got a nice direct line getting the body and to ski obviously as close as he can to the center line of the course. and to the gates themselves, so forcing the ski to uh, follow a, a short line, and as long as he can keep the momentum and keep that rhythm going from side to side, then that's a, that's a fast way to make it down any slalom course. But that dodgy rut there, you have the double gate, then one blue, and then that red just up above where Brazdagand is just now, that hole in that course, that needs a bit of attention, otherwise it's gonna catch a lot more of our coming skiers out. Well, he's got 2.27 seconds in the bank, but has he lost it all? 2.07.08, yes he has, and he will go into second, 1.38 off the pace. <laughs> Gong Zhao Lin for the People's Republic of China, with bib number 72, the next to go, the 32-year-old in his first major championship. And his advantage over Han, our leader, is uh, well, 1.15 seconds in the start hut, and that is now 2.31 at the first time split. Yeah, that's a real strong top section. He's had a little bit of problems and now lost that attacking line. He's not so close on the gates as he was to begin with, but now trying to wind the line back closer to the gate. Here's a chance for him to do that. He gets oh. to run straight, but no. He's definitely out of this one. The ski's off. That, uh, that rut bouncing him out. And, but you know, perhaps having the ski locked onto the rig might have helped him there. He might have been able to recover that. But, uh, well, that's one for the post-match analysis for Gong and his team. But it's another DNF. So they'll reunite him with his ski. But, uh, yeah, just to uh, hold on the course while they uh, get him back into the ski. Yeah, one of the advantages of the, the length of the running length of the course being relatively short, they're able to wait for the previous athlete to cross the line before they send the next person down. So right now it looks like they're only running with one skier on the course at any one time. And that's a, that's a good step by the organisers to ensure everybody's safety. No. Uh, so, sorry, not quite gone right with the initial effort to reunite him with the ski, but he's uh, back into it now. And 
Gong will make his way down the side of the track. And as we look up, we can see the course workers going to work on the track. Li Xing of the People's Republic of China, bib number 63, 14th quickest after the Super G run. And an advantage of 1.36 over Han Sang Min of Korea, our current leader. And as he comes to the first time split, the advantage grows to 2.28. Very clean technical execution. And by that, I mean just how precisely he's rolling from edge to edge. That's allowing him to ski a very direct line. Not so much now as the terrain starts to get a little steeper. He looked more comfortable up on the flats. But, uh, playing the cards that he has to his advantage on the top part. The advantage has dropped to 1.9 as he enters this very steep finishing section. And this, uh, these really wide turns on the steepest part of the track are the major challenge now in the course. The vertical combinations not so, so long as you can come into them on an early line, you shouldn't present too much of a challenge. Oh, he did that well for the first couple. Now he's got it back to 07, 08. He negotiates it well, and he's in by 1.58 of a second. It is Li Xiang of China who leads the way now. Nicola Biscard Hudson of Chile out of the startup, bib number 68, 1.24, his advantage over our leader, Lee. And Biscard Hudson, 12th quickest in the Super G part of this Super Combine. Another skier looking very solid on the top. Well, the deficit nearly halves. And he's very late in the line here. Yeah, a couple of big mistakes there. Those will have been costly. We've just seen a steady approach paying dividends for the skier before. Oh, Biscuit no. has an unable to deliver the same series of turns, but he's back in, not too far off the racing line and those tricky turns above the verticale. Here come the big swings now, and you can see the gap has grown significantly. 1.55 and not looking comfortable at all on this steep section. He's, he knows he's just got to ski this one home safely and take what he can from the result board. One hairpin, here comes the second, oh. then four open gates. Not too tricky to get down to the line from here. Getting the turns in nice and early, and goes fourth. 3.08 off the pace for Biscuit Hudson. Suzuki Takeshi of Japan out of the start hut. His advantage over our leader, Lee, is 1.35. And Suzuki looking pretty comfortable. Yeah, and now he finds his rhythm. That trademark clearing of the gates with the high outrigger shows that he's right on top of his game. Well, he's a slalom champion from 2014 in Sochi. He's a two-time uh, world champion in slalom as well. And he is showing his skills getting the outriggers out to knock the posts out of the way or the poles out of the way, and it's 6.02 now. Yeah, experience paying dividends here. He knows how to read a difficult course like that. Look, he put the brakes on just in the nick of time, but without losing any more time than was necessary. 205.5 the time, and he's in by 8.33. Lovely run from Suzuki Takeshi of Japan. Aaron Ewan of New Zealand, the next to go, bib number 59. 10th quickest from the Super G run. His advantage over our leader Suzuki is just 13 hundredths of a second. Keeps the rhythm, keeps it going steady. He's not quite got the specialist skills of the previous couple of skiers, but he knows he can ski himself into oh, a possible chance medal. Just as I see that, though, coming out of that verticality before the double almost grinds to halt, and that was a straddle. The tip of the ski definitely went the inside of the red pole. So, unfortunately, Ewan will be out of this one. So, a huge disappointment for Aaron Ewan of New Zealand. As he registers a DNF 
in the men's super combined. Yang Zilu of the People's Republic of China, 0.54, his advantage over Suzuki Takeshi of Japan, our current leader. And Liang showing some good form in these early turns, some good rhythm and some good line, but his advantage is now the smallest that we have in ski racing at 1 100th. Great skiing up on the top, really rhythmical, beautiful to watch. Great execution, he's got the line under control. Maybe could run a little straighter on a couple of the turns, but right now he's keeping himself in touch. Excellent work here from Liang Zilu as he comes down this really steep section, but he's making it look ever so easy. Lovely rhythm, can he keep it together? Yes, he can, and he's in by 1.85. Brilliant final section from Liang Zilu. Chen Liang with bib number 70 from the People's Republic of China. His advantage over Liang Zilu of China, our current leader, 0.32 of a second from the first run, the Super G run, early on day three, and he's more than doubled the advantage to 0.72. Oh, he's trying everything he could. It was an ambitious run. I'm not sure if he passed that gate cleanly. Looked to me like perhaps he'd run it down. We'll have to either look at a slow-mo or rely on the gate judges to decide that one. He's battling on, keeping them, trying to get the fight back to the hill. Well, one of the course workers. Out now. In the way, and I think he's going to struggle to get up there because it's really very steep. He's going to give it a go, is he? Oh, well, no, well, he definitely didn't make that blue gate. So that will be a disqualification. And Chen down, fifth for the time being, and that will be looked at for sure. No, that's definitely going to be a DQ. Pascal Christen of Switzerland, the next to go, 0.81. Of a second, his advantage over Liang, our current leader. And Kristen was uh, seventh quickest from the first run. And looking a little tentative on these opening turns, and now is 1.78 the wrong side of the clock. Yeah, he's, re he's relying on his uh, Super G leg from earlier this morning to uh, carve him enough of an advantage, and now he knows he's not a slalom specialist. He knows he just has to do his best to keep himself in the course here and uh, see what the other competitors can bring to the hill. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a struggle, though. This is not an easy set and very difficult snow conditions now for the sit skiers. The mixture of the soft snow at the very edge of the racetrack and the, it's still quite firm in places, soft in others, so very difficult, difficult to predict, especially with just a single ski underneath your body to rely on. Very difficult to predict how the turns are going to develop. Now, oh, Kristen picking his way down here. And he's getting too late in the line, and he is out. So disappointment for Pascal Kristen. It was getting harder and harder, and eventually he's out. But you can see how soft the snow is with the track that's left in the finish area. Keino Akira of Japan out of the start hut, and he was sixth quickest after the first run. 1.16, and there's a mistake that's shaved off all the speed. I'm saying 1.16 is advantage over Liang, and the People's Republic of China, our current leader. But that now is a deficit of 1.53. Yeah, and that's an LW11, you know, when he gets out of shape, he's, that's the second time he's sort of run off the line. He's, he's going to struggle, really struggle to get back online and rear that fault, that problem there. He's not going to make it back from that, I fear. And up is out, so another DNF in the Super Combined sitting. Forrest Meyer of the Netherlands, the next to challenge Bib 52, his advantage over Liang, our leader, 1.61 of a second. 
The Dutch racer fifth quickest after the first run. Yeah, and now that we're in the remaining five, the action really will hot up. Guys have to find that blend of risk taking, moderated though, with some tactical approach because the course conditions are very difficult. 0.92 now, the advantage for Floris Meyer. Floris keeps it going. Heavy work, I would suggest, of these middle section turns. Here comes the long verticale, runs it straight, tries to get an advantage out of that, survives the big hole on the exit. 1.23 though, the wrong side of the clock. That's gettable if he absolutely flies down here, which our leader Liang did. Maya, no, he spins out, and that is his race run. Frustration for the Dutchman, but he is a DNF. Quick look back at uh, Mayer's run, showing the snow underneath, not really giving the ski very much purchase. The chemicals have ceased working now. It's just too warm for the snow cement to do much. A lot of soft debris at the side, but even on the ideal race line, the snow peeling away underneath the skiers, uh, skiers' razor-sharp edges. Nils de Langen. Of the Netherlands, his advantage over Liang, our leader, 2.82 seconds. Now, his best performance in the Paralympic Winter Games was eighth in the Super Combined in 2018. He's got a real chance to better that here. Yeah, and he knows he's got to fly a top section like we've seen from no one else so far. This is excellent skiing from De Langen. But there are stiffer challenges to come on this slalom track, and they're going to start right here. Nicely done. Lovely work through the verticale. Not too bad on the double either. 2.96 the advantage. These are the money turns, though. He's got them pretty decent. Now he can run straight out wide for the red. Quick switch across to his left. Now try to straighten up all the way to the line. 155.32, and we have ourselves a new leader. It is Nils de Langen of the Netherlands who goes top of the pile for the time being. Disappointment for Liang, delight for de Langen. Uh, it's important, de Langen sending a message to the top of the hill for the remaining skiers. It's still doable with a clean set of edges and good execution, confident skiing. The leaderboard is still for a change. And this race isn't decided yet. Current standings in this men's super combined sitting race. Jeroen Kamschler of the Netherlands, bib number 51, the defending super combined champion from Pyeongchang. Third quickest after the first run, and he gets caught on the tails. That's a great recovery. Yeah, he's the master of that. Great skills by Kamschler, and he's kept the pace. 1.45. He extends the advantage, but he's right on the edge. And using these ruts, launching himself out, almost taking air time between turns to using it to change the edge very straight on the verticale. Brilliant run from him so far. 1.83 the right side of the clock. Oh, amazing slalom skiing in the sit ski category here. Camp sure. Oh, a big heavy edge set at the end of that four gate flush. Four gates to go now though. 153.4 and Camp sure is in 2.89. The defending champion has guaranteed himself a medal because there's only two left at the top of the hill, but he's thrown down the gauntlet to those that remain. Well, that's dramatic stuff. Just right on the limit. That was the recovery, about 10, 12 gates in Campshire. Put his foot on the gas from the start gate and kept it there all the way to the finish line. Dramatic stuff. <laughs> That was an excellent run. Bib number 69, it's Molly Taiki of Japan. 1.2 seconds, his advantage over Kampstra, our current leader. And Molly, 41 years of age. 
is a world champion in this event, but that was back in 2013, and the advantage is nearly all gone. Keeps the work rate up. That experience counts for a lot in a course like this. The risk taking isn't there, though Mori going for a more conservative approach to that that we've seen from the previous couple of racers. And the red light as a result of that cautious approach. The uh, podium is separated by 4.81 of a second. And he's getting very late in the line. He's going to be lucky to make this. Just makes it. Yeah, those gates are very close together. Only about five metres between the pairs of red and blue poles. Oh, he's in the missed vertical the red gate, He's out. No, that's the end of his challenge. Those vertical combinations catching him out just within sight of the finish as well. So the two Dutch racers know they've got themselves a medal because there's just one left at the top of the hill as Maurice skis out. <laughs> Shake of the head from Maury. <laughs> Our last racer in the start hut. Jesper Pedersen of Norway, his advantage over the defending champion, Kamsula, 1.7 seconds. And Pedersen is on his way. Even cleanly through these top turns, cutting a very direct line. He was the world champion in slalom in January on home snow. And the advantage, 1.31. No, it's a very healthy gap. He's just got to keep it solid from here in. It's not exactly his style. He likes to, well, he's only got one gear and that's flat out. He loves to take the risks and that's exactly what he's doing here. Well, it's down to 1.03, so this could be quite close. Can't afford another mistake. Keeps that clean. Oh, just puts the brakes on a little before the first of the double hairpins. Should be okay. It's going to be close, though. 150-51 and he's in by 0.28 of a second. Pedersen denies the reigning champion, Kamschler, who has to settle for silver. But Jesper Pedersen has done enough to take the Paralympic title. And Kamschler and De Langen round off the podium, and Liang of China is down to fourth with Pedersen's run. Well, Jesper Pedersen showing a very mature approach. He took some risks on the top section where he thought it was safe to do so, backed it off on the lower half of the course, knowing that he had the advantage from the Super G leg from this morning's part of the competition. A well-measured run and a well-deserved win for the Norwegian team in the shape of Jesper Pedersen. So confirmation then of the men's super combined sitting race. Jesper Pedersen of Norway is the Paralympic champion. He's beaten your own Kamshow, the defending of the 2018 Paralympic champion into second place with Nils de Langen of the Netherlands rounding off the podium in third. And nine of the 18 that started got to the bottom. So now the recognition ceremony for the men's super combined sitting race and led out by Niels de Langen of the Netherlands who finds himself on the podium at the uh, Winter Paralympic Games for the first time. Eight, three years ago, Nils de Langen is on the podium at the Paralympic Winter Games with a bronze in the Super Combined. Jeroen Kamschler. Gold medalist in 2018. He's the silver medalist in Beijing in 2022. A 
And Jesper Pedersen of Norway is the Paralympic champion in super combined. He picks up, or will pick up, his second gold medal of Beijing when the hardware is presented in the Yansing Medal Plaza on day four of these Paralympic Winter Games. Well, what a day we have had here. Another six gold medals decided, this time in the Super Combined. And the weather, despite its heat, has not beaten the racers as they deliver yet another action-packed day of alpine skiing. Well, super combined day, always full of thrills and spills as we look for the best all-round skier, and it hasn't disappointed. No, it certainly hasn't. It's been some day of action, that's for sure. A long day of action, I have to say. I have to take my hat off to all the staff, the volunteers, but most of all to these incredible athletes out there, these para-alpine the para skiers in the super combined competition. What a day it's been. Such a... Uh, such a great effort from everybody well deserved medals you know the sky may be blue but the conditions underfoot have been very difficult right from the start of the day so really I'm sure they'll be glad of a day off before we get further into the action well the athletes have two days rest now before we get back into action on day six but from the Yansing National Alpine Skiing Centre the super combined race is done and dusted